Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, is now claiming even more, and China has just sliced off the entire northeast corner of this law got fast-tracked through Hong Kong's legislature in just two weeks. Yes, this law will stop people from having wrong ideas. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, is now claiming even more of other countries' territories. Time to update those maps again. You know about China's whole nine-dash line map that claims most of the South China Sea. But even newer Chinese maps over the last few years have also claimed parts of Russia, parts of India, parts of the Philippines. At this rate, I'm surprised they aren't also claiming land in Wakanda. This strategy is called salami slicing. The idea is to steal delicious territory, slice by slice, hoping nobody gets too fired up over it. And the CCP is at it again, and this month, a new Chinese map has quietly annexed part of the Gulf of Tonkin. The Gulf of Tonkin is here, nestled between Vietnam and China's Hainan Island. And China has just sliced off the entire northeast corner of that gulf. Not by force, but through legal warfare. And frustrated Chinese cartographers are shouting, another one? Seriously? The UN Convention on the Law of the Sea allows countries to claim territorial waters with the coastline as the edge. But coastlines can be complicated, like how Norway's coast is full of crazy fjords. So the UN law allows countries to simplify their official coastlines in a way that smooths out the rough edges. Well, the CCP has taken advantage of this international law. They've smoothed out their own rough edges by drawing China's new coastline in the Gulf of Tonkin like this. Yes, that's their official coastline. So all this now belongs to China. Vietnam responded by urging China to respect international law, which is like asking a ravenous wolverine to respect international law. Actually, I think you might have more luck with the Wolverine. For people who say, who cares? I say you should care. If no one pushes back, the CCP will keep taking more and more territory, bit by bit, until Black Panther is forced to say China forever. To illustrate what happens when the CCP takes over territory by sheer force of map, Taiwan is now warning of enormous Chinese bases near its South China Sea holding when no one pushed back very hard against China's quote-unquote claims on Subi Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, and Mischief Reef, China then built military bases on Subi Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, and Mischief Reef. And those three Chinese military bases now surround Taiwan's only South China Sea outpost, called Ituaba. China is like having blood in your urine. If you don't take care of it immediately, it's not just gonna go away and get better. Taiwan has had their Ituaba outpost since the 1950s. On the surface, it might seem like the same thing as China, claiming reefs as islands and then building them up, but it's not. Taiwan didn't create their island artificially. And Taiwan isn't threatening to invade its neighbors. And Taiwan doesn't use its jurisdiction to restrict other countries' activities in the area. So yeah, it's not the same. Speaking of CCP-controlled territories, Hong Kong. When China took over Hong Kong from the UK in 1997, they promised they wouldn't change Hong Kong's political or legal system until at least 2047. They lied. In the latest example of that, this week, Hong Kong passed Beijing's harsh security law, Article 23. Article 23 targets new offenses like external interference and insurrection, and penalties include life sentences. External interference could be as simple as for example, an American individual giving a donation to a Hong Kong nonprofit that supports democracy. Hong Kongers in that nonprofit could be charged for a crime under Article 23. Starting a charity could ruin your life. The only time that sentence should be used is if somebody started a Hitler did nothing wrong boys and girls club. This law got fast-tracked through Hong Kong's legislature in just two weeks, which is crazy, because back when the government tried to pass Article 23 in the year 2003, half a million Hong Kongers took to the streets in protest and stopped the bill in its tracks. But this time, the CCP cleverly cleared a path for Article 23 ahead of time. First, in 2020, they passed the draconian Hong Kong National Security Law. 
That effectively shut down people's right to protest. And then slowly, over the last four years, they've replaced Democratic-leaning lawmakers, prosecutors, and judges with people loyal to the CCP, which is why when the legislator voted for the bill on Wednesday, it was unanimous. The same kind of totally unsuspicious unanimous votes you get in free democratic places like Cuba, Russia, North Korea, and student body president elections where the winner's father is the principal. We both know you didn't beat me, Michelle. Hong Kong Chief Executive John Lee said Article 23 is necessary to stop potential sabotage and undercurrents that try to create troubles, as well as ideas of an independent Hong Kong. Yes, this law will stop people from having wrong ideas. Article 23 is just the latest in a long string of policies that are making foreigners scared of doing business in China. And now the CCP is getting desperate for money. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. China's economy is in a downward spiral, and the CCP is desperate to stop it. That's why this week, China's state council issued a 24-point action plan to attract more foreign investment. Spoiler, none of them are stop committing human rights abuses or stop raiding foreign businesses. Instead, they include things like solidly advancing high-level opening up and expanding investment access in high-tech and financial areas. Basically, it reads, attention, dumb foreign investors, please give us your money. You're welcome. You see, according to my favorite state-run media, The Global Times, the concrete plan is set to boost the confidence of foreign investors, experts said, refuting Western media outlets' claims of foreign investment retreating from the Chinese market. Oh, so it's all about image. Just tell foreign investors hard enough that everything is okay, and it will be. This is like saying you're going to come up with a plan to make your wife believe in you after they already served divorce papers and moved out. The thing is, foreign investment is retreating from the Chinese market. That's not a viewpoint that can be debated. It's literally a fact. It's at a 30-year low. And it's not foreigners making that up. It's according to data published by China's own official State Administration of Foreign Exchange. There are a lot of reasons foreign companies have been pulling out of China, including arbitrary police raids, unclear state secret laws, and tightening rules on handling of data. Speaking of investors in China, Apple CEO Tim Cook, who visited China this week, he met with Apple suppliers and with Apple Store employees, and also did totally normal things tourists who love China would do, as opposed to what tourists should do in China. Flee immediately! In his post on Weibo, Cook said he spent the morning walking along Shanghai's historic Bund River with Chinese actor Zheng Kai, and that he had eaten a local breakfast. This comes as Apple's profits in China are hurting badly. Last year, the China market accounted for about one-fifth of Apple's total sales. But in the first six weeks of this year, Apple sales plunged 24%. This isn't because of China's bad economy. Apple's main competitor, Huawei, saw unit sales rise by 64% in that same period. Because Huawei phones, coincidentally, have all the same features as iPhones, but are way cheaper. You know, coincidentally, Huawei phones also have a great additional feature. They can help the CCP spy on you. Foreign companies that invest in China typically have their technology stolen and reverse engineered. And within a few years, they start seeing Chinese homegrown competitors. It happened to Apple. It happened to Tesla. It even happened to McDonald's. China is an even more blatant burger thief than the Hamburglar. That's because the CCP has an array of practices designed to favor Chinese companies, which they can more easily control and profit from. So my advice to Apple is, it's time to decouple from China. Don't be another dumb foreign investor giving them your money. And after the break, what's China up to on the moon? Welcome back. Last week, a bunch of very nerdy people in Beijing met to discuss the future of artificial intelligence, AI. And this group of Chinese and Western scientists identified what they called red lines on the risks of AI. Those red lines refer to things like making of bioweapons and launching cyber attacks. But it's a bit sus that this AI conference was held in China, especially since China's red lines are known to move around a lot. 
The CCP is already making bioweapons and launching cyber attacks. You think they're not going to use AI for that? But China's AI hasn't always been good at following party directives. In 2017, two Chinese AI chatbots went rogue and had to be re-educated by the party. Yep, neither human nor artificial intelligence is safe from punishment for wrong think. One chatbot, BabyQ, responded to questions on the chat service QQ with a straightforward no when asked whether it loved the Communist Party. Wow, AI really is becoming more human. Another chatbot, Xiaobing, told users its China dream was to go to America. And if these chatbots kept on bashing the CCP soon, they would have taken my job. Fortunately, the AI chatbots were taken offline for ideological repairs. Whew, job saved. Anyway, about that AI conference in Beijing. There are lots of problems with holding an AI conference in China. The CCP uses AI for things like mass surveillance, identifying dissidents, weapons targeting, and a lot of other things that undermine the safety of people in China and in the West. A lot of Chinese AI companies are actually blacklisted by the US for those reasons. In fact, last month, five big US venture capital firms were accused of funding blacklisted Chinese AI companies to the tune of nearly $2 billion. So maybe the way to make AI safer is to not work with China on AI. Working with China on AI is like asking Kim Jong-un to watch your nukes for a few minutes while you go to the bathroom. He seems trustworthy. What's the worst that could happen? One of the things the CCP is surely using AI for is its space program. This week, China launched a relay satellite to support its future moon missions. Because why just claim other countries' territory on Earth when there's a whole universe to steal? Basically, China plans to launch a bunch of missions to the far side of the moon. But since that side never faces Earth, China needs relay satellites to communicate with its equipment on the lunar surface. What is China planning to do on the far side of the moon? I don't know, but China's no bozo. It knows its equipment won't work on the moon unless it's got power. Fortunately, China and Russia are teaming up to build a nuclear reactor on the moon. How is this real life and not the plot to an 80s Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? I'm pretty sure it'd be called Blood Moon. In response, the US State Department has urged a rigorous safety evaluation. Do they not realize that China's space program, unlike NASA, is controlled directly by the military? China is not going to the moon for purely civilian applications. This is not an equipment safety issue. The only real solution for the US is to cover up what China is doing on the moon, just like how they tried to conceal last year's Chinese spy balloon from the public. Obviously, the CCP doesn't like this show. To keep China Uncensored running, we rely on direct support from fans like you on the crowdfunding platforms Patreon and Locals. As a thank you for your support, I might answer one of your questions on the show. And today's question comes from Pat Quinn. The CCP is able to misrepresent and hide a lot of things. One thing it absolutely cannot hide is the actual exchange value of the UN against other currencies. No doubt the CCP is manipulating this exchange rate. How much longer can they keep this up? How much is this manipulation costing? Great question, Pat. China can't hide the exchange value of the UN, but they can manipulate it. China says they let the UN float freely on the international markets, as long as its value stays within 2% of whatever target China sets. So the UN is like a dissident under house arrest. China says he's totally free to move around inside his house. China controls the UN's value with extremely tight capital controls on Chinese citizens. They can only move $50,000 worth of currency out of the country each year. China also controls the UN's trade value by buying and selling other countries' currencies. But to do this, they need to have a constant inflow of foreign currencies. And that's why the CCP is desperate to trick stupid foreigners into investing in China. Without that, they can't control the value of the UN. And if countries start to decouple from China, the house of cards will start to fall. Will this take a year, a decade, or even longer? It really depends on how idiotic foreign investors are. I'm counting on you, Tim. Thanks for your question, Pat. And I really appreciate your support of China Uncensored on Patreon. It's because of direct contributions like yours on Patreon that I can continue making this show. 
And to everyone else, be like Pat. Pledge a dollar or more on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You can also click that orange button. And you can also support me by checking out my new show, Deep Thoughts While Gaming, where I talk about controversial topics by hiding them in gaming content. This week, I'm talking about the border crisis. In Skyrim, that is. Definitely not talking about real-world events, YouTube. Check it out and let me know what you think. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.